All right, guys, number 18, a lot of questions on this one. Uh, but again, this goes back to the first week uh, of intermediate when we went through our series and parallel circuits. So on these guys, we have a, an alternator or it could be a motor, it doesn't matter. Uh, and you're testing between this terminal right here and this terminal right here, and you have it on the ohmic setting. That's for our Y connection. For our delta connection, we're testing between our line terminal and the other line terminal, same as we did for the Y, but on this one, it's a delta circuit. So we have to remember which one is the, the series and which one is the parallel. So we said that the Y is more of a series circuit. All right, so when we look at this guy right here, uh, we can redraw this circuit for this Y. So here we've got, from this point right here, we've got this terminal, then it goes out, goes through a winding, goes to that center point right here, then goes through another winding. What's going on? And out to our line terminal out here. And we are just taking an ohmic reading between here and here. Each of these guys is two ohms. And so obviously in our series circuit, uh, our R total is gonna be equal to R1 plus R2. So obviously the answer here is gonna be four ohms. Okay, so for the Y, we're looking for four ohms. And almost everybody gets that one. It's pretty intuitive in that for this one, it is a series circuit. And the rule for series circuits are that we have R1 plus R2 equaling our total. Okay, so we got four ohms. Let's take a look at the delta circuit. So we're gonna start at this point right here. And you can see that from there to there, we have a two ohm winding between those two points that we're taking that ohmic reading on. So we've got a point here where we've got a coil and we're gonna take an ohmic reading between those two points. Uh, but then it looks like in parallel, right? Cause that current would come over here. We also have another path for current and that current goes through a two ohm coil. So in parallel with this guy, we have a two ohm coil that comes over to that node right there and then continues on to the place where we have our ohm meter lead. So that goes through another coil and connects up in parallel with the other side of our two ohm coil that we looked at before. Each of these guys has equal values and essentially what we're doing is we are looking at the ohmic value between here and this point right here. So it's a parallel circuit. Remember that for the delta, it is more of a parallel circuit. And we put an ohmmeter across those three windings. We have one winding here, but then the other two are in series and they're both in parallel. So our total resistance here for this guy is gonna be the product over the sum. So we have two ohms in one, one leg, four ohms in the other leg. So we do the product over the sum. Okay, so remember I said in intermediate back in the day that your first week with the series and parallel circuits with the resistors, a little bit of magnetism is gonna help you to do most of your troubleshooting. So with that guy, we've got uh, two times four, which is obviously eight. Then we've got two plus four, which is six. Let's bring up our calculator. We'll do eight divided by six. And remember, we're looking for a value that's less than the smallest value, right? So we're looking for a value that's less than two ohms. So eight divided by six gives us a value of 1.33 repeating. Excellent. Excellent. So our total resistance here is equal to 1.33 ohms. 
Sweet. So just with a quick uh, ohmmeter check, we can see that the windings of the alternator or the windings of the motor uh, are still good. All right, guys, let's move over to uh, question number 19. So these are the, this is the last one before we get into uh, the neutral calculation, the three-phase RLC. Um, but let's bang this guy off, and then we'll see how, much, how long we've got for this video here. So number 19, three elements of an electric heater are connected in delta through a three-phase 480 supply. The impedance of each element is 10 ohms with a power factor of 100% because they're resistive loads. So with this guy, we don't have to worry about anything uh, when it comes to the wattage because whatever the VA is, the wattage will be identical because we're just dealing with resistors. So we're looking for the total kilowatts for the entire load. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's got, <clears throat> let's see, it's a small diagram here. Let's take a look and we'll redraw the, the delta here. And for that, we've got uh, 480 volts as our supply. So our line voltage going into this guy is 480 volts. And at this point, I hope you've got the delta and the Y configurations in your head. But again, the rules for the delta are that we have the line voltage and the phase voltage the same. Uh, but our line current is going to be greater than our phase current by a factor of root 3. Okay, so that tells us that the voltage on the uh, on the phase is going to be 480 as well. I'm just going to grab, no, can I grab this? Yeah, it's all right, two seconds, just in the way, so I'm going to grab it and move it over. Okay, so the voltage on this guy is 480 volts on the phase as well. Beautiful. Okay. And the impedance on each element is 10 ohms. So each of these guys is 10 ohms. 10 ohms here, 10 ohms here, and 10 ohms here. Balanced circuit. So we can find our phase current by taking our 480 volts on the phase. And then we can divide by the 10 ohms. So that gives us a phase current of 48 amps. If we want to find the line current, well, the line current for the delta is higher. So for that guy, we can find the line current by taking our phase current and multiplying it by root 3. So we've got 48 amps times root 3. And what does that give this? Let's see, we got 48 times the square root of 3 gives us 83.14 amps. And that'll be our line value. The 48 amps was our phase value. Okay, we can drop those guys in there so we know that the current on the inside of the delta is 48 amps on the phase and we know that the current on the outside of the delta is root 3 higher at 83.14 amps on the line. Okay so now we've got everything that we need in order to find our total kilowatts here. So our kilowatts total for A we're going to use, now this is going to be the same equation as we use for VA, right? Because the VA and the kilowatts are the same now. So we're going to do V line times I line times root 3. Our line voltage is 480 volts. Our line current here is 83.14 amps. And we'll multiply those values by root 3. Okay, so we've got 480 volts. We're going to multiply that by 83.14 amps. And then we're going to multiply that by the square root of 3. That gives us 69.121. So 69.121 kilowatts. OK. 
Okay. Again, the value that we had was 69,121, and we moved that over one, two, three decimal places to give us a kilowatt value. Next thing we want to know what would be the total kilowatt load if the elements of the furnace uh, were reconnected in a Y connection. All right, well, let's do uh, a quick little drawing as a Y, and we'll be able to, to figure that out. So I'm just going to get rid of this guy here just to have some room for the Y circuit. So we're going to reconfigure these guys. Still a resistive loads. And we've got our voltage of 480 volts going in. That's our line voltage. Then we know that our phase voltage is going to be 277. And we have what? A resistance of 10 ohms. Okay, so for our B answer here, we now need to take our 277 volts on the phase divided by our 10 ohms on the phase and that's going to give us 27.7 amps on the phase so that value is right here 27.7 amps on the phase and we know that that's an identical current here on the line okay now we can find our kilowatts total For the Y. All right, this guy here was in terms of the delta configuration. And so for the Y there, again, we're going to do V line. Come on, Pete, let's go. So V line. So line voltage is 480 volts. Our line current is 27.7 amps. And we're going to multiply that by root 3. Just enough room to squeeze this in there. So we got 480 on the line times 27.7 amps on the line times the square root of 3. That gives us 23,029. So we'll round that guy up, and we got 23,000.03 kilowatts in the Y configuration. Okay, so a quick and easy way to do this it would be that with the same impedance, when we switch to the Y, we can just do a ratio here. So if we do 23 kilowatts, which we had here, um, out of the 69 that we had for the delta, then we'll see a percentage of the Y versus the delta power. And you can see here that you get 33% of the power that you would in a delta. Okay, so the Y always has 33% of what the delta could provide us with. All right, guys, that finishes up the, the random questions that we have aside from the chart questions. Um, keep going in the playlist and you'll have question 20 following this, but you'll find that it goes back to the charts uh, and for most people, it's a lot easier to organize your thoughts in form of how, in the chart form. All right, guys, thanks for your patience. We'll see you in the next video.